As we began the search, um, Rachel walked into the office one day and she says, if I could have one person lead our program, it'd be this guy. Kenny Brooks, the man who transformed Virginia Tech and took them from a decent team in 2016 to a Final Four team just last year. The man who became synonymous with Virginia Tech women's basketball. The man loved by many of his players and fans. That same Kenny Brooks has decided to say peace out to Virginia Tech and hello, Kentucky. So let's revisit Kenny's career at Virginia Tech, why he left, and who he may be bringing with him to Kentucky. What is up, awesome people of the internet? We got another deep dive video for you that we're gonna get into. And before we do that, I do just wanna give a huge, huge, huge thank you to those who are financially supporting this channel. If you want to help out this channel, you can do so over at patreon.com slash Quita Love Sports. All right, on to Kenny Brooks. So you know him as the Virginia Tech guy who coached the amazing players like George Amor, Elizabeth Kitley. But did you know that he actually had a job before the Hokies? Uh, well, before his run at Virginia Tech, he was the head coach for the James Madison women's basketball team, and he was there for 14 years. James Madison is his alma mater, and before he became the women's basketball coach, he actually was an assistant coach for the James Madison men's team for four years prior to that. Um, and then he got tapped to become the interim head coach for the women's team. That interim tag only lasted a couple months, and Kenny officially became the head coach of James Madison women's basketball team in 2003, where he stayed for 14 seasons, becoming the Duke's winningest coach, with a record of 337 wins and 122 losses, getting five CAA tournament titles, taking the team to six NCAA tournaments, and five WNIT appearances. Virginia Tech saw the success that Kenny Brooks was having just down the road, and they offered him an opportunity to become the head coach of the Hokies in 2016. And what was the goal? Well, Whit Babcock, the director of athletics of Virginia Tech, said, we hired Kenny in 2016 with the intent of revitalizing our women's basketball program. And guys, Kenny did just that. In Blacksburg, Kenny took a team that was decent at best and made them great, achieving a record of 180 wins and 82 losses. He won at least 20 games in seven of his eight seasons at Virginia Tech, won the ACC title this year. Ben, he, he went to four straight NCAA tournament appearances, um, and went to the Final Four last season. I will assume this was a giant success. Kenny Brooks built a winning culture for the Hokies, and he got top talent to choose VT. And now we begin a new era. Elizabeth Kitley and Kayla King are out of eligibility, and now they're on, on their road to play professionally. Georgia Amore still has until April the 1st, to decide if she wants to declare for the WNB draft or return for a fifth year. Though she did post this on Instagram yesterday saying, Hokie Nation, what a ride these past four years have been, but it is time to say goodbye. It's been a blessing to be a part of this family. I've built a home here in Blacksburg and lifelong friendships that I'll always hold close. Special thank you to my coaches for their love and support. Lots of hugs to my teammates who gifted me the memories of a lifetime. There aren't words in the world that can express the gratitude I have for this place because this place will always be home. Now, after this message, we know for sure she is not returning to Virginia Tech. And it makes me wonder, will she follow Kenny to Kentucky? More on that in a bit. All right, so Kenny Brooks decided that now was a good time to pack his bags and leave Virginia for Kentucky, a team that is in need of his rebuilding skills. Kentucky was an okay team that suddenly became really, really good in a short stretch of time, and then they won the SEC title. Uh, that was when they had now Atlanta Dream star Ryan Howard on their program. After Ryan left, Kentucky floundered, and then coach Kyra Elzey had two back-to-back -back losing seasons, so Kentucky decided to fire her on March the 11th. And then Kentucky hired Kenny Brooks. After the announcement was made, uh, UK Athletics Director Mitch 
Barnhart said, And she shows me a video of a press conference where he describes the beauty of the game of women's basketball very vividly after one of their games. Uh, it caught my attention about the way he spoke of his players, about the way he spoke of the game, and what it meant to him. His demeanor, same on the sidelines as it was in the press conference. Passionate, loving, a care for something that he deeply adored, the game of basketball. And uh, he has done that remarkably well over an amazing career, and I'm going to chronicle a few things that were just impressive as heck as you begin to look at his resume. And most of you have read this. Um, he's our ninth women's basketball coach at Kentucky. Over 500 career wins as a head basketball coach at James Madison, where he's the winningest coach in the history of the school. 180 wins at Virginia Tech. 11 regular season and tournament conference championships. 10 NCAA tournament appearances and one Final Four. Six WNBA draft picks since 2015. Seven total picks. 18 20 win seasons in 22 total seasons as a head coach includes 18 20 plus win seasons in his last 19 seasons as a head coach the lone exception being the COVID year guided players to seven conference player of the year honors in the last two seasons combined Brooks went 2-0 against Tennessee and 3-0 against Louisville <laughs> four-time CAA Coach of the Year, known best for developing players. And if you've watched any of his teams, he has taken young women from stage to stage to stage in the development of the game to the spot where they succeed in an incredibly high elite level in women's basketball. And here's what uh, Coach Kenny Brooks had to say. But when you think about Kentucky, you think about basketball. And for me, um, when, I, when I was approached about a situation that could possibly be with Kentucky basketball. I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking. Uh, we, we had a wonderful thing going, uh, what we did at Virginia Tech, you know, it was very, very, very special. Uh, and what we did, we created a buzz for women's basketball that is much needed and much deserved. So I was extremely proud about that. And uh, our fight, you know, through those years, we needed to win basketball games, but we needed to bring awareness to women's basketball. And I'm looking forward to that challenge here. I know Big Blue Nation is very passionate about their Wildcats. And I need each and every one of you and your efforts, your support in many, many ways to make this happen here at Kentucky. And here is what was said during the press conference announcement. You said you weren't looking for a job when you were So what was appealing? to think this job was in competition with the SEC or something else? Yeah, there were, there were a number of reasons. Obviously, uh, in, at Virginia Tech, being in Blacksburg, you know, very, very comfortable. Uh, just coming off of a, a Final Four appearance, ACC championship. We won the ACC regular season this year. Uh, we had, I think we had eight or nine sellouts in a 9,000-seat arena. And, you know, that's, you know, that's living pretty well in women's basketball. And, um, and this situation came, and you know, to be honest with you, the, the, the landscape of college athletics is changing. And with the leadership of, of the SEC and uh, where it's going alongside with the Big Ten, um, you, know, you kind of want to align yourself to be able to compete at the highest level year in and year out. And uh, so I looked into all those factors and um, you know, just everything that it presented, the resources that, that, to be able to go out and compete consistently. Um, and I just thought that it, it was in my gut, it was the right move. You know, I talked with my wife extensively about the situation, uh, my family, because, you know, they, uh, they're most important to me and they were on board. And, um, and so I just thought it was a great opportunity. You know, I, it, it, it's going to take something that's going to be ex extremely special for me to move. And I thought this was a great opportunity. And now if you're curious about how much Kenny Brooks is getting paid, well, according to Zach, Gogenheim of on three. Um, Zach said contract details for new Kentucky women's basketball head coach Kenny Brooks have been released. It's a five year deal worth $7.7 million, $1.5 million per season on average. That makes him the highest paid head coach, the seventh highest paid head coach in the country and the third highest in the SEC. So yeah, there you have it. Um, 
absolutely he's going to have a new challenge. Um, and also he's going to get the bag at Kentucky. All right, now we will see what exactly he's able to do on the court. Um, will he go on to win his first 15 games? Will Kentucky be ranked in the top 25? Now, these are two things that he did in his first year at Virginia Tech. Uh, will he be able to recruit top players like Asia Shepard, Liz Kitley, Taylor Soule, Georgia Amore, and others? Will the recruits that Virginia Tech got to commit to the program next season, will they follow him to Kentucky? What about the current players on Virginia Tech? Will they follow him as well? As of right now, we have only one player who has entered the transfer portal for Virginia Tech. Let's go over some of the players that might enter the portal and head over to Kentucky. First, Georgia Amore. Georgia Amore is a baller of a point guard who has averaged 18 points a game this season. Uh, Georgia has a very, very good relationship with Kenny. And as I said before, she is leaving the Hokies, uh, but she didn't say whether or not she was declaring for the WNBA draft or if she was going to play for another program next season. So I think it's likely that she does follow Kenny to Kentucky and we will likely see some sort of announcement in the coming days or weeks um, and that she will be the Wildcats starting point guard next season. That's just my thought. But again, she could declare for the WNBA draft as well. Clara Strack, a.k.a. Baby Kitley, is a six foot five freshman who I could also see going to Kentucky as well because of her great relationship with Kenny. Uh, she has a lot of potential um, as a post player, and it would be pretty cool to see her play in the SEC. All right, let's move on to Matilda Eck, who is a junior who Kenny recruited to Virginia Tech this year. Uh, she was a transfer from Michigan State. She started each game this season for the Hokies, and I think she's likely to wait and see who the next coach for Virginia Tech is before entering the portal. Because as of right now, they, they do not have a replacement yet for Virginia Tech's head coach. They said they are doing a nationwide search, so we will see who ends up being the new coach at Virginia Tech because I think that will determine a lot whether or not some of these players decide to stick it out and stay with the new and, – and, and go – go uh, just to see what this new coach is all about for Virginia Tech, or if they're like, hey, yep, I'm not sure about this. I'm going to go with Kenny because I know who he is. <laughs> you know, uh, that's kind of one of those things that Virginia Tech really has to get the head coach position solidified rather quickly. Um, so we will see who gets that job. Um, we also have Gabby Brooks, Kenny Brooks's daughter that – I believe also will follow him as a walk on for at, at Kentucky. Um, I, I don't think it's likely at all that she decides to stay at Virginia Tech after her dad is now the head coach at Kentucky. I think she goes with him as a walk on for Kentucky. We also have freshman Snaya Suffren, who has already entered the portal. We will see where she goes. She is a freshman who's played 15 games this year for the Hokies. Will she head to Kentucky? Maybe. We'll see. Uh, what about the recruits, Lexi Blue, Maya Hazelton, uh, and Clara Silva? Will they change their commitment to Kentucky from Virginia Tech? Uh, I think it's very likely that some of them will follow Kenny. It's possible that Kentucky will turn into Virginia Tech Part 2 with at least five, maybe more, uh, former Hokies on the squad. And what does that mean for current Kentucky players? Well, some have already entered the transfer portal. And it's likely that we will see more entering the portal soon because from the looks of it, Kenny is bringing his luggage. And as Dion says, they Louie. Coach, when you've got a situation like this and you're talking about roster construction, does it start with evaluating who you've got? You talk to players and where you've been? You talk to players who are committed to you? You make them talk to you? Just kind of walk me through how the process will be well, I don't know if there's a blueprint uh, for today's um, roster construction or reconstruction, however you want to uh, call it. I'm looking forward to sitting down with the young ladies and, um, and just talk about a lot of different things, the expectations, uh, what they're looking for, um, just getting to know them. I know a few of them. I recruited a couple of them. I competed against a couple of them. Uh, we played <coughs> Kentucky, I think it was last year in the Bahamas. Uh, so very, very familiar with what they do. 
Um, and so just really just trying to align and see what their situations are. And um, I'm looking forward to that because I know there's a lot of potential there and a lot of potential. And, uh, and obviously, you know, this day and age right now, it, there's a lot of movement going on. You know, so I think it's very, very important that I sit in front of them and be able to talk to them very soon. That is the video, guys. Um, this has been me talking about the new coaching structure that we have over at Kentucky. We have Kenny Brooks, who has left the team that he was with for a while, the team that he has like built up in Virginia Tech. He has left that team for Kentucky. He is getting a very, very sizable pay payday. And also, he is getting the chance to kind of have a blank slate where he can rebuild from scratch again. Um, so, so it should be pretty interesting to watch him do his magic next season. I do think that is going to be a dramatic turnaround for Kentucky next year. Will they make the tournament? We will see. Um, but, but, but one thing is for sure, we will see a lot of Kentucky, of, of Kentucky players next season that played for Virginia Tech this season. So yeah, that is the video, guys. I do want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do me a favor and hit that like button as well as hitting that subscribe button as well. And as always, I pr appreciate the Patreon members for their support of this channel. Until next time, guys. Bye. And, you know, a lot of people want to ask, you know, what your philosophy is going to be. Year to year, it's going to be, we're going to be a team. We're going to be a team that you can be proud of. Uh, the style of play changes year to year. You know, what type of players do you have? What, what's going to be your strengths, your weaknesses? What are you going to work towards? And, uh, and we, will, we will evolve every year so that we can stay competitive uh, and go out there and win. We will have a winning attitude, um, and our expectations are to win. Obviously, I'm not going to disrespect the SEC and how powerful it is. And we know that we have to do a lot of work to get to that point. You can't just sprinkle magic dust on it and say, hey, we're going to win a national championship. A lot of work has to go into it, and we're willing to do that. And so I would not be here if I did not think that this is a wonderful opportunity. And this is an extremely wonderful opportunity, not only for the program, but for me and my family. We're looking very forward to, to just being embraced by the community. Uh, I am a family man. It's very, very important to me uh, that my family is good, my family is okay, because that's what we're gonna spread throughout our program is family. And we're gonna make sure that we go out and we represent extremely well. So this is an honor for me. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited about the new possibilities and what we're gonna be able to do. Um, I, we're up for the challenge. You know, we're up for the challenge. We know it's not gonna be easy.